They call it the HP ZBook G7, a great laptop for creative professionals, but the problem is, which one do you choose? In this video, we're going to be looking at the HP ZBook Power versus the HP ZBook Create. Now, first and foremost, they're built within the same chassis. So you have a nice all aluminum chassis with a hinge that opens and closes smoothly with one hand. The edges are milled very nicely. There's good smooth rounded corners, not really any areas that are going to catch your hand or be sharp. Now, with that in mind, though, I have found one area, which is right here along the bottom bezel. I said not many. Um, so there's one area there that where the laptop connects with the bottom cover and it attaches. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of a not a sharp edge, but just you can feel it. It catches a little bit, but overall a very well put together laptop. Now, as far as the ports selection is concerned, you have two USB type A's, a USB C, your power adapter, as well as a headphone mic jack combo. On the other side of the laptop, you have your Kensington lock, your RJ45 network port, your USB type A, your HDMI, and your security card port. Now what this is, is it's for different businesses or maybe government contracts that need this laptop and need heightened security. So what it is, is you have a card and you can't access the computer or maybe certain information on the computer until you plug in this card and then you are good to go. This is similar to a Google Titan key. Now it's got great ventilation on the bottom cover and on the top of the keyboard deck. This laptop does run cool and fairly quiet and has what is called Z algorithms. So basically what that means is it anticipates the apps you're using and slowly increases the fans performance as needed. Rather than getting hot and then just ramming the fans to full blast, it slowly increases the fans to keep your laptop cool, which helps with a lot of noise discomfort as well as the long-term longevity of the parts. Now, speaking of longevity, these laptops are run through a mill standard 810H. Now, this is the military standard testing that does like dirt, moisture, impact, uh, component usage, all of the all of those things. If you want to research more about that, you can just look up mill standard 810H test and you can see all the different tests that these laptops go through. Now, with that in mind, I asked the vendor, uh, the rep from HP, okay, great. So you run through the mill standard, but how does this actually affect the consumer's use case of the laptop? And he said that they've had the lowest post sale issues on the ZBook uh, in records year. So for the past five years, they've seen less than 1% of laptops come back with issues post sale, which is incredible. And they actually give you a three year warranty with Z books compared to the standard one year warranty on something like the HP Omen, not to hate on the HP Omen. I'm just telling you how much confidence that they put into the build quality and longevity of these laptops. Now I won't belabor the different, the review of this laptop. I will say that I love the keyboard. Um, and it's, it's really great. I'm going to jump into more of the head to heads on why you should choose one laptop over the other. First and foremost, let's talk about color gamut range. As you see, the color gamut range on the create G seven is better than the power G seven. Now, as you can see, both laptops come with different components inside of the chassis. And the reason being is these two laptops are meant for different programs. Just getting into the simulated benchmarks, you can see that they're pretty much neck and neck in Cinebench R20 close in Geekbench single core and a little bit farther in Geekbench multi-core performance. Now, as you can see, the white is going to be the ZBook power and the more turquoise color is going to be the Create G7. As we move into Autodesk 3ds Max, you can see that the Create is actually outperforming the power. And you would think, okay, wasn't the power marketed towards like 3D modeling? Now, yes, this is true, but depending on the app you're using, you may see more performance out of the create over the power. And let's talk through this really quick. Programs like Autodesk 3ds Max and Autodesk Maya benefit from more VRAM and more CUDA cores, which the create G7 has in its GPU. So in these two initial programs, you can see the create benefiting and performing better in these two Autodesk programs and the power falling slightly behind. In PTC Creo, you see the gap start to close because it relies less on how much VRAM the GPU has and it relies more on some clock speed rather than cores and threads. So they start to even out a little bit here as they have even amounts or similar amounts of clock speed. 
Now, as we move towards SolidWorks, this is where you can see the ZBook power really take off. What we're seeing is that SOLIDWORKS really benefits from Quadro GPUs. These are workstation-based GPUs, and it highly prefers them over, say, a gaming GeForce GPU like that is inside of the Create G7. Same thing when we look at Autodesk Revit. Um, this program also benefits highly from a Quadro workstation card rather than a GeForce gaming card. Now, moving on to the After Effects benchmark, you can see that the Power G7 also wins out in After Effects as well as the After Effects render benchmark. So if you're gonna be somebody using After Effects often, I would recommend you going for the Power. Moving into the Premiere Pro benchmark, you can see that they're basically neck and neck for the export time. And for DaVinci Resolve, you can see that the Power G7 performs slightly better than the Create. Now, keep in mind that this is the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and the reason we're seeing better scores out of the Power is slightly higher clock speed. When you're using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, it's using more of the CPU rather than a combination of the GPU and CPU. So if we were using a combination of the GPU and CPU in the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna see almost neck and neck performance or slightly better performance out of the Create G7 because it has a higher gig VRAM card in it. Now moving forward to the playback test, you can see that the Power G7 has slightly better playback in Premiere Pro, having less drop frames, but they're pretty close. You can't, you can't really see 92 drop frames while you're editing in Premiere Pro. So I basically put those in my book, neck and neck. So as far as playback is concerned, both will be suitable. Now, inside of Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, the reason that we're seeing such a drastic difference between these two laptops is because the Power G7 has 64 gigs of RAM, whereas the Create G7 has 16 gigs of RAM. And you might say, Ben, that's not fair. And you know, I would agree. It's not fair that the Power G7 has 64 gigs of RAM and the Create G7 has 16. It's really hard to compare. But this test also shows you that the more RAM you have in your laptop, the more performance you will have. So if you get the Create G7, what I would do is I would make sure you get it with about 32 gigs of RAM. And what that'll do is that'll put you in the mid 700s range on the Photoshop benchmark with some of the other laptops that come with 32 gigs of RAM, like the MSI Creator 15 here on this chart. So you're gonna be to the mid to the upper 700s with the Create G7 if you were to have 32 gigs of RAM. Now moving on to the thermal benchmarks, you can see that the Power G7 runs quite a bit cooler than the Create G7 by about 10 degrees Celsius. So if you want a laptop that runs a little bit cooler, I would lean you towards the Power G7 as opposed to the Create G7. Now, all in all, they're both great laptops. One of the biggest differences between these two laptops is how they handle 3D modeling. So choose wisely, but overall, you can't go wrong with either one. They both perform well for creative professionals. If you're curious about the exact price differences between these two models, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. If you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Until next time, keep editing, keep creating, keep designing. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.